got to sort slip blend and sip and sip you've got to sort slip blend and sip and sip you've got to sort slip blend and sip and sip you've got to sort slip blend and sip and sip you've got to sort slip blend and sip and sip you've got to sort slip blend and sip and sip you've got to sort slip blend and sip and sip you've got to sort slip blend Today I'm going to show you how to attach two pinch pots together to create a hollow form. And then I'm going to turn that hollow form into an animal. When you get your clay, the first thing you need to do is break it into three pieces. The larger piece is going to be for the body, the middle sized piece is going to be for the head, and probably the smaller piece is going to be for your additional details. So take one of your larger pieces, roll it into a ball, and we're going to turn this one into a pinch pot. Push your thumb into the center of the clay and you're just going to start pinching and rotating your fingers around the pot. Notice how to start I only have one thumb inside my pot and I'm using the other four fingers to slowly go around and open up the center of the pot. So here we go again. Stick my thumb into the center, pinch and turn, pinch and turn, pinch and turn until I get the nice opening of a pinch pot. Take a second to smooth it out, and then we're going to attach your two pinch pots together. Now I notice the opening of my larger pot is a little bit too wide, so what I'm going to do is actually called choking the clay. I'm using both hands, kind of wrapping it around the openings, and I'm trying to pull that hole in and make it a little bit smaller. Anytime you attach two pieces of clay together, you need to score, slip, blend, and smooth. Now you may notice that I'm using a toothbrush. That's because the bristles of the toothbrush kind of do the scoring and slipping at the same time. The bristles are gonna scratch up the clay, which is scoring, and then it's gonna help apply the slip, which is just clay mixed with water and it works kind of like glue. Blending and smoothing comes next. So I'm using a popsicle stick to blend those seams together and make that one piece of clay again. I don't want to see the crack in between the two pieces of clay. I want to blend it into one nice, big, smooth piece of clay. So I'm using the popsicle stick to blend it, and then I'm going to use my fingers to smooth it. You might want to dip your finger into a little water or even into the slip, and that'll help you smooth out your seams. So now I have a head and a body, and it's time to turn it into a creature. If I add a beak and wings, it becomes a bird. If I add some long floppy ears, it's a rabbit or maybe a dog. It's really up to you. My biggest piece of advice, though, is don't let the details get too skinny or they'll become fragile and they're easy to break off. So try not to let things get much thinner than your pinky. Try not to let things get much thicker than your thumb because if things are too thick, we also have a problem. And remember, any time you put two pieces together, you need to score, slip, blend, and smooth. So I've been working on creating a little puppy dog here. Um, he's got a snout, he's got two ears. Now I'm about to attach the tail. And again, I wanna warn you about things that are too long and skinny. If you just have the tail stick out, there's a really good chance it's gonna break. So anytime you have something long and skinny like a tail or maybe legs, try to attach as much of it to the main body as possible. So instead of having the tail stick out, I'm gonna coil it around the back side of him and attach as much of the tail as I can and maybe just have just like the little end stick out. Now that my puppy's almost done, I want to remind you the reason we just put two hollow pinch pots together was because we want air to be able to get into our clay to help it dry properly. If those were two solid balls of clay, it might blow up in the kiln because air and water might get trapped inside and have nowhere to go. And if you've ever boiled water on the stove, you know that when it bubbles, it starts to expand and then your poor little clay animal will be no more. So somewhere on your sculpture, you're also gonna have to add a hole. It could be on the bottom, it could be the eyes, it could be the mouth. Don't be gross about it, but you need a way for air to get in and out so that your clay project dries properly. So now it's your turn. 
You're going to make two clay pinch pots. You're going to attach them together to create a hollow form and then turn it into some kind of creature. It could be real. It could be imaginary. Don't forget to add a hole so that air can get in and out. And don't forget to score, slip, blend, and smooth. You got two swords, slip, blend, and smooth, and smooth. You got two swords, slip, blend.